All right, welcome everybody. It's Timothy here. We are looking at a pack of Theros, flashback draft time. Theros is a set that's near and dear to my heart. Oh, for a lot of people, when you ask them what their favorite set is, they say um, Innistrad or Zendikar, something along those lines. For me, it's probably Theros because it is the set I started with. It just has a lot of nostalgia. I'm not saying it's the best set in the world, but it is the set that got me into magic. It's the set that made me fall in love, make, made me fall in love with drafting and just uh, all together, you know, made me a magic player. So it was a good introduction. The mechanics are great. Monstrosity, um, Bestow being two of them, Devotion and Heroic being the other two. As far as the actual pack we have here, I'm looking at two cards. Well, three cards, and they're all kind of in the same theme. Nykthos is interesting. It makes a ton of mana if you have a ton of permanence on board. Um, showing off Devotion, and I might just take it. It is worth noting that this is um, a Phantom Draft. There's also Insatiable Harpy, which is uh, basically Sky March Blood Letter. And then uh, there's Sip of Hemlock, which is about what you're going to get out of removal spells here. And the rest of the pack's not actually that great. Cyclops and pretty much every Bestow creature is playable. And then removal spells like this are great. But let's see what we can do with Nykthos. Um, I think far and away, blue and black are two of the better color. Blue, black, and green are pretty good. Uh, I remember red being very aggro. Uh, there's red, white, heroic, and there's red, black, minotaurs as two of the archetypes here. I think Reverend Hunter is a devotion card, but it's not a very good one. It comes in with a counter for equal to your devotion to green. So if you play it on an empty board, it's a 2-2. You could play it into a big board and just uh, have a bunch of other creatures that make it a little bit better, but altogether it doesn't play out too well. I'm looking at Triton Fortune Hunter. 3 mana, 2-2. Two, two. When you target it, draw a card. Or when you target it with a spell, rather. And then there's also Omen Speaker, which originated from Theros, which is a very good card that gets reprinted uh, every now and then. Scry was a returning mechanic when Theros was released. Scry is now an evergreen mechanic, so you see it in every set, but that wasn't the case when Theros was around. Theros brought Scry back as a block mechanic, which was pretty nice. There's also Dissolve, which is fine, but I'm going to take Triton Fortune Hunter and probably take Erebos now. Not sure why people haven't taken Erebos already. It's very good. If basically any of the gods are playably, playable, and they get a lot stronger if you have um, just like a solid theme. Blue-black is also kind of a theme. It's more of like a dirtly um, devotion deck, and I do have Nykthos too, which kind of lends to that same strategy. But I'm definitely taking Erebos, not only because I think it's the best card in the pack, but it's also just a sweet card. You always wanted to open these when you were playing Theros. The gods were like... You know, the cycle of cards that had a huge appeal to Theros. You wanted one of these when you drafted. They were sweet. That or one of the Planeswalkers. All three of the Planeswalkers from Theros were great. That was uh, Ashiok, Xenagos, and Elspeth. They were all fantastic. Voyage's End is the also... Or, uh, the also... Is also a um, forerunner for one of the best cards in this pack. It's just very good. Bounce spells are great when your opponent's using all their mana to uh, bounce things and... Or to monstrosity things, like spend an 8 mana, you bounce it in response, you just, you know, completely 8 your opponent's turn. So here, what I'm looking at are the blue spells. I don't care for either of these black cards, even though they do make Erebos better, which, you know, we're going to gear towards black devotion if that's open, but I'm also not going to make my deck worse by taking some really bad black cards. So I think I'm going to take Nimbus Nyad over Voyage's End. This is 3 mana, 2-2 two, two fire, which is fine, but you're more interested in bestowing it, giving a creature plus 2, plus 2. Make it 1 with the wind, and then when the creature with Nimbus Nyad dies, you get Nimbus Nyad, which is a really cool design with bestow. If the creature that's bestowed dies, or gets bounced in response, you get the actual creature back, which is nice. Also a combo with uh, Triton Fortune Hunter. Timurant, not really what I'm looking at here. Vanquish the Foul was destroy target creature power 4 or greater at sorcery speed, Scry 1. I'm telling you, the removal's pretty bad here. Viper's Kiss is nice against the aggressive decks, but I think I'm going to take Boon of Erebos. It does trigger Triton Fortune Hunter, gives plus 2 plus 0 and regenerates. Oftentimes you trade this in 2 life to kill off one of your opponent's creatures. Seeing a lot of white, but a lot of these white cards aren't great. Traveling Philosopher demonstrating how many vanilla creatures there are in this set. I think there's like 11 or 12. I might be making that number up, but there are multiple vanilla creatures in each color. And they tell the story of the Theriad, which is kind of a whatever, but <laughs> it is what it is. All right, what are we looking at here? 
Unfortunately, no cards that go to the Black Devotion theme, and Lost in the Labyrinth is not really what I want to be playing. Asphodel Wanderer, that's another Stone Shock Giant as well. There's also Flame Blade Adept, which doesn't really go sweet in our deck here. Thassa's Bounty is not what I want. I don't really want any of these cards. None of them are great, so I think I'm going to take one of the red cards here. And maybe I pivot. Red-blue spells is kind of a thing. Tormented Hero. Ooh, Rage of Perforos is a good removal spell in this set. I mean, it's about as good as removal gets in this set. Four damage to a creature for five mana. Can't be regenerated. There's Deathbell Raider. If I feel like Minotaurs is open, which I'm seeing a lot of uh, black cards. There's also Fate Foretold, which is a card, uh, kind of a pet card of mine. When it comes into the battlefield, you draw a card. When the enchanted creature dies, you, you draw a card. So it's a good way to trigger Heroic, draw multiple cards, and then when that creature dies, you get a little more value. I'm going to take Tormented Hero here. Another little Heroic creature. Not bad with Boon of Erebos. Goes with actual Erebos. Steam Augury's kind of whatever. All of these cards are kind of whatever. Maybe Benthic Giant's what I want here. Not an amazing card. Boulder Fall, 8 mana to split up 5 damage. 8 mana is a lot. Uh, Steam Augury's just... Not that great. So I'm going to take Benthic Giant here. Not amazing. This is the pack we opened to wheel in all of the green sideboard cards you could ever ask for. Also a Stymied Hope, which is not that great. It's a Spell Pierce that scries. And Coastline Camara, which is equally not that great, but might be the pick here. Just as a big blocker or something. Follow that up with Spark Jolt or Scourge Mark or Flesh Mad Steed. Whenever a creature dies, you tap it. Which is fine, it's just a 2 mana 2-2 two -two most of the time. Do I want Scourge Mark here? It does draw me an extra card. It triggers Tormented Hero, it works with Triton Fortune Hunter. Or do I just want a 2-2? Two -two? Yeah, I'm going to take Scourge Mark. Don't mind that. Kettle Blepis is better than I tend to give it credit for. It is a big, dumb 6 mana thing. Here's another vanilla white creature. And Spell High Chimera is... Eh. Yeah, I'll take Kettle Blepis. When you play this, it shuts down a lot of boards. Hey, look, we've got the Dirtily Black cards back anyway. I do not like Asphodel Wanderer, so I'm going to take Felhar. Felhide Minotaur. This card's fine. Viper's Kiss. Like I said, decent sideboard card against people with a bunch of X1s. So looking like blue-black, which I enjoyed quite a bit. Hopefully we can pick up more Black Devotion cards. Gainsay is not even a bad sideboard card. There was a cycle of cards that hated on their own color. I think Gainsay is a reprint from an earlier set, but the other ones, like Peak Eruption, is a red card that destroys a mountain, so on and so forth. Dark Betrayal, black card that kills a black creature. You get the point. Scourge Mark, Viper's Kiss do help with Nykthos as well, which, who knows if I'm actually playing Nykthos or not at this point. We'll see whether the Devotion theme works out or not. Ooh, lots of good options here. So, the standout card for blue-black, of course, is Shipwreck Singer, but it's possible I wheel if I'm the only blue-black player. It's not a card that's worth splashing. Ordeal of Erebos, probably one of the worst ordeals, but all the ordeals are fairly strong. You put them on a creature, whenever that creature attacks, it gets a plus one counter, and then if it ever gets a third counter, you sack the ordeal and get some sort of extra effect. You can really steal games with this. Spear of Heliod's also just fantastic, but we're nowhere near white. Uh, I'm going to take Ordeal here. Would not mind Disciple of Phoenix, Shipwreck Singer, or Wave Crash Triton. These are all cards I like quite a bit, but Ordeal is perfect. I would like more early game creatures to kind of go with these uh, early game combat tricks that I'm holding. Although Triton Fortune Hunter Ordeal is pretty good. Anything is good on Triton Fortune Hunter. I like Wave Crash Triton though. Ooh, ooh, hello. Oh my god, how can you not like this set? Wow, this this set is actually kind of stacked. There's so many good cards here. For white, all four of these white cards are playable, with Hopeful Eidolon looking like it's not that good, but it's actually fantastic. Emissary, Alsead, Winged Steed Rider. I'm going to take Sea God's Revenge. As much as I love this other Fortune Hunter, Sea God's Revenge can get you out of some pretty awful situations. It is six mana, but you bounce three creatures, you scry one. If you are actually dealing damage early enough in the game, this can push in a win for you. And get you out of some pretty tight spots against decks that uh, are looking to um, suit up their creatures, Monstrosity and um, Heroic them to all oblivion. So I am going to take Sea God's Revenge. I don't think I can take Mono 6 drops 
which is sad, because I like these. So, well, we still have options here, though. Sea Lock Monster is pretty good. Sea Lock Monster just 5 mana 5-5, five, five, basically with Defender until it reaches 7 mana. But if you're playing against a blue deck, it can actually attack as a 5 mana 5-5. Five, five. Aqueous Form's not what I want. I don't mind Baleful Eidolon as a blocker. Vaporkin's a decent attacker, but it does look like I'm going to be a little more dirtily. And Horizon Scholar's pretty good, too. Um, Horizon Scholar would be a good replacement for Benthic Giant. I think we're going to take Sea Lock Monster, though. Eh, Horizon Scholar might just be better. I might get Sea Lock Monster back anyway. Swansang. Swansong's fine. It's not super great. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's a null, but it counters creatures as well. Oh, no, it doesn't counter creatures. It counters enchantments as well. Flamecast Wheel is just borderline unplayable. Yeah, I'll take Swan Song. This, isn't, this is a Phantom Draft, so picking up random cards like this doesn't really add a lot of value to my deck, but if it's between Swan Song and a null, actually a null might be better. A null might be better. Not seeing a lot of early game stuff here. Like, I could pick up another Scourge Mark and it'd be fine. Favorite Hoplite's good. Rage and Alciad are good as well. Yeah, I'll just pick up another Scourge Mark here. Alright, deck not coming together in pack two quite a much. I mean, we picked up two really good cards here, but outside of that, we didn't pick up much else. Hopefully we'll have a good pack three, though. And maybe we'll wheel some stuff. There were a lot of good blue cards in some of those packs. Um, ooh, Omen Speaker's good. Crackling Triton's whatever, but it's fine. Century of the Underworld, also decent. Maybe worth splashing, but not going that route. I will pick up Omen Speaker. Good blocker that scries too when it enters the battlefield. I'm in for that, especially if I'm going to be looking to uh, play some late game creatures here. Oh, can I just open an Ashiok in pack 3? That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Nykthos also not looking very good in this deck. If I start wheeling Wave Crash Trains, I'm going to feel pretty uh, pretty good about it. Omen Speaker picks up these ordeals pretty nicely, too. Just It has a big enough butt that it's hard to deal with. Getting it up to 4 toughness is nice, especially when this set has like Lightning Strike in it. Lightning Strike at common. Yeah, kind of a hodgepodge right now. We need some ways to close out the games. We need some, like, mid-game flyers. Probably should have picked up that Vaporkin over maybe Horizon Scholar, but Horizon Scholar beats pretty hard. Uh, Mogus Marauder is a good way to kind of push in the game. I believe it gives X creatures Intimidate and Haste, where X is your devotion to black. Yeah, I like that. I do like that. I mean, even if it comes down and it's just a 2-2 two -two Intimidate with Haste, that's fine. And then even some other creatures Intimidate can help me push in the win. And I still really don't like this Wanderer. Chosen by Heliot's fine. And the rest of the cards are kind of okay. Mediocre too okay. Huh. Ooh, that's a late Skull Cleaver. This card's very good. This was the card that taught me to respect aggro decks. Just 3 mana, 4, four, uh, four power haste creature just gets you. So I could take Burnish Heart here, which is a card I like, especially if I end up splashing something. Or I could just take Baleful Eidolon, which I think is going to be the pick. Just another Dirtly Death Touch creature. There are quite a few in the format, with even more Death Touch creatures later on in some of the other sets in the block. And Burnish Heart doesn't look like it's ramping me to too much, so I'll take the little Death Touch boy. Be good against uh, some of the decks that... Uh, want to play big monstrosity creatures. Um, I'm not going to play... I'm not even really playing this first Catablepis or an 06, so I think I'm going to take Crackling Triton. Probably not play it. Although I'm getting close to uh, being a low on playable count here. None of the Wave Crash Tritons are coming back. That's so sad. We'll see what pack three gives us, though. Gray Merchant? Can I just have some Gray Merchants? Can I just rattle off, like, three or four Gray Merchants in a row? That would be pretty sweet.
scourge mark. There are some pretty hyper aggressive uh, decks in the format too, so Viper's Kiss is a nice sideboard card. I will definitely play Fate for Told. I like that card actually a lot more than I think people, other people liked it. It's not like it's amazing or anything, but it does net you a card throughout the course of the game. And if you have random heroic creatures laying around, it gets a little bit better. Like even Tormented Hero into Fate Foretold, you know, just nets me a life, drains my opponent a life. And at some point during that game, I'm going to draw an extra card. Doesn't Not like it does anything actually proactive. At the very least, it's two mana to cantrip. Although if you get blown out in response, you draw nothing. Creature count's kind of low. Aqueous form? Is Aqueous form something I'm interested in here? Might just take another boon of Erebos. Got a lot of combat tricks and weird little spells like this, but not a lot of creatures to be used them on that are worth using them on. I need some beef. I need to add a lot of beef to my deck here. Otherwise, like, how am I killing my opponents? Hoping I draw Horizon. Scholar every time. Uh, Fleet Feather Sandal is not a card I'm going to play. Might end up playing like Benthic Giant just as a beater or something like that. I mean, Benthic Giant Nimbus Nyad is kind of the beatdown. Cool story with Swan Song. Um, there's a card in this set called uh, Colossus of Akros. It's a 10 mana 8-8, eight, eight, and it costs 10 mana to use its monstrosity, and it becomes like, I think, a 20-20 trampler or something like that. I don't know. It becomes some giant creature, and uh, I once used a Swan Song on my own spell to make a 2-2 two, two bird and block the Colossus of Akros, which was enough for me to survive to my next turn and kill my opponent on the swing back. By Swan Song in my own card. You do not get to do that too often, nor would you want to too often. I think a null actually would <laughs> probably end up being better than Swan Song. So we're hoping to pick up a lot of early game and maybe one or two finishers. Let's, or Ashiok. Can I get an Ashiok? That'd be nice. Or a Thassa. Can I just open Thassa here? Not that I'm really a devotion deck. I don't think I can even turn Thassa on. I mean, I guess I can, but it'd be a struggle to do it. Read the bones, like some draw spells. Can I can I get some here? All right, let's see what pack three has for us. High hopes. I guess Erebos is a dude, right? I don't know. I keep saying she, but I'm surprised nobody took Erebos. It is a sweet card to play with. It does have the little greed ability on it too, and your opponents can't gain life, which is relevant. There are cards like Nylius Disciple and uh, Grey Merchant of Asphodel that gain life just randomly in this set. Or things like Tormented Hero that trigger and gain you random amounts of life. Hope Flyed Wand, stuff like that. I don't have a lot of uh, black blips here for Airbos anyway. Could play all of these Scourge Marks. Alright, come on, pack three. Does that mean somebody's absent? Is that what that little sign means? That somebody's disappeared from the draft? Do I pause the video? I guess I pause the video until something happens. All right, we unpause the video and we have an insane pack. Wow, look at this pack. So, oh my gosh. I don't think I'm gonna get anything that I want back because what I'm gonna do is take a board overlord. This card is very strong. It makes one one flyers equal to your devotion to black when it comes into play. Also just a six six flyer. And then you do have to sack a creature each upkeep, but it can kill your opponent. And then there's also Ordeal of Thassa, which is better than Ordeal of Erebos. And then also Thassa's Emissary. Whenever it hits your opponent, draw a card, or you can enchant it up for six mana. Whenever that creature hits your opponent, draw a card. I'm going to take the rare, but it, it's... I mean, look at the card quality in this pack. We're probably going to get back Triton Short Thief. 
But I'm going to take a Born Overlord. I was asking for more beef in the deck. Metamide? I don't think Metamide is what I want. I do want this Belfall Eidolon a little bit more now that I have, like, some dirtily black creatures. Or, like, late game set up. Yeah, Benthic Giant coming back out for the time being. Metamai is not actually great. Also kind of creepy. And it's not really worth splashing for. So yeah, Belfall Eidolon. Sip of Hemlock is just... Ugh. Six mana removal spell. You'll play it. Guess I don't have a lot of removal or any at all. So... I didn't pick up any of those Voyages Ends in the first pack. This has been an awkward draft for us where the packs that have cards that we want are all loaded with cards, but the packs that don't have cards have nothing for us. Hero's Downfall, easy pick here. Cavern Lampad would be nice. Um, Horizon Scholar, I'd probably take Wave Crash Triton over any of these blue cards at this point, but I'm going to take Hero's Downfall. I was just talking about not having removal, and Downfall is a very good removal spell. You can also randomly take out Planeswalkers if we play against any of those, which we're hoping not to. I need more creatures. I just I, I want more creatures to put in this deck. Just more ways to block and then try to wrap up the game with like Overlord or something like that. I don't see Erebos ever attacking in this deck. It's going to be hard to get to 5 Devotion. Well, 4 plus Erebos. But at least it functions as a draw spell, I suppose. At the very least. These Eidolines are decent pickups. They can help us fight the early game. Other than that, they're kind of whatever. Fill out this part of the curve. Decent top end part here. If I need to, I can play a Benthic Giant. Also, suck it blue decks. Wow, this draft is going so slow. Ooh, Insatiable Harpy. That's a nice one. Perfect on the curve, too. And it's double black for Devotion. Neshen Asp is probably the best card in the pack. Maybe a little bit worse than... Well, probably on par. This was upgraded to an Uncommon when they printed it in um, Conspiracy, just to showcase its power level. Insatiable Harpy is great, though. This is a Sky March Bloodletter. Or is it Bloodletter? No, Sky March... Uh, Sadistic Sky Marcher. Except you don't have the option to reveal a vampire from your hand. I guess it's also double black. But you get the point. It's 4 mana, 2-2 two, two flyer lifelink. Good creature. Uh, I, I'm just noticing that that Shipwreck Singer didn't come back. So maybe somebody else is in blue-black. Which is kind of annoying. It's not a card worth splashing for. Ooh. Alright, could take another uh, Triton Fortune Hunter, or could take this Erebos Emissary. I think that's going to be the pick. 4 mana, 3, 3, discard a creature to give it plus 2, or do the same exact thing on the creature you enchant it. It also gives plus 3, plus 3 if you enchant it on a creature, so I kind of like that. It's a nice little pickup. The curve's looking a little bit better. We're adding more beef to the deck, which is what I wanted. And besides, we have like 4 cards in our deck that say Erebos. How can we not enjoy our deck, right? Also, picking up more creatures is nice. These are two high-quality creatures to be picking up as well. Two good uncommons for the deck, followed by, you know, a good rare, good removal spell. Black very clearly open in this direction. Blue might not be very open. You know, I could skim on a lot of the blue and play, like, these Auras and go all-in on Devotion for, like, Erebos and Nykthos, but I don't think that's quite what I want to be doing, considering that... These are all just kind of dirtily auras. Although Scourge Mark replaces itself. Just not that great. Dark Betrayal, Blood Toll, Harpy, Wave Crash, Triton, Sip of Hemlock. Time Defeats. Okay. Just okay. Uh, which would I rather have? Blood Toll, Harpy, or Wave Crash, Triton? This freezes a creature down whenever you target it. Also blocks very well. Blood Toll, Harpy makes each opponent or each player lose a life. But it attacks for two in the air. I think I'm going to take Blood Toll Harpy here. Triton is good with these boons of Erebos's. Oh, I might take Triton. No, Blood Toll Harpy is probably better. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take Blood Toll Harpy. Like I said, i got to kill my opponent somehow. And 
I can only rely on my late game stuff so much to do the job. Black Devotion more important than Blue Devotion here. Like, if I were to cut blue cards, I'd cut... Oh, Coastline Chimera is not a card I want to play in the first place. I could just play these, like, five blue cards and bring in some Scourge Marks, maybe even the Cattle Blepis. Viper's Kiss is a fine main deckable card. Just to kill off X1s, and which there's a okay amount of. Farika's Mender, that card's good. Ooh, Prescient Chimera is very strong. This is five mana, three, four flyers is already good. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, scry one. Traveler's Amulet. Farika's Mender is good, and I don't care for Return Centaur. Nice little pick up there this late in the pack. Also, I always love the art on this card. Shaman doesn't have flavor text. This looks like the background for um, Run Aground from Ixalan, but with a with a griffin on it instead of a <laughs> instead of a merfolk and a boat, I guess. I think our deck definitely took a big bump here in the last pack. Bunch of red green cards and then stuff we can't play, so I guess I'll take Stymied Hopes. Card's not very good at all. <laughs> guess you can get somebody with it, but. Oh, I, I remember being very disappointed if I had to put this card in my deck. So, kind of kind of like where we're going here. Picked up a lot of power in this last pack. Like, these four cards plus Hero's Downfall. Just solid fours and fives and a good removal spell. Here, uh, <laughs> told you we were going to get it back. I'm not playing anything in this pack. Maybe Scholar of Atheros is just, I, I'm not playing anything. I'm not playing anything. This is a deck by itself. Black White is a real good deck. You just dirtle around. It's kind of what our deck does, but you have Scholar to kind of use your mana to actually kill your opponent. Which I wish I was uh, on that plan because it's good plan. I mean, this is a very, like, unassuming looking card. Three mana, one, four. Three mana to drain a life. But it does just, it kills your opponent. And usually you're playing decks that have lots of land in them. Lots of mana. I'm going to play, I could, guess I could play Bronze Sable. Um, I'm not looking to, like, attack my opponent into oblivion here. Also, look at that face. Get that out of my face. I'm going to take a null. I'm going to take the possibly better Swan Song. I'm not playing Swan Song. Swan Song has a real downside of giving your opponent a 2 2 flyer. Such a cheap, efficient counter spell, but limited on what it can actually target. And you don't want to be giving your opponent 2 2 flyers. Wow. Alright. A null it is. Am I playing Nykthos? Nykthos doesn't seem amazing here. I'm going to have to play one more card in my deck if I don't pick up another playable here. Probably going to be just like a Scourge Mark. Yeah, not that guy. Benthic Giant, maybe. I guess it could be Viper's Kiss, but I'd rather have the Scourge Mark and have the Cantrip, I suppose. Yeah, I'm not really loving the idea of Nykthos here. I guess I could play Asphodel Wanderer or Bronze Sable. I like Bronze Sable more. Although Asphodel Wanderer does work better with Overlord plus um, er Erebos. So, uh, not happy about that. But it does mean I can kind of dump off this Scourge Mark now. Also, decks in this format tend to be 17, even 18 lands sometimes. Uh, nah. <laughs> I'm not that all in on devotion. This card's just not good. Playable enough that I'll do it since I have ways to follow it up and make it useful, and I have ways to make the black mana symbol kind of matter, but. Here we are. Scourge Mark. Is Scourge Mark better than Fate? I think Scourge Mark's going to be better than Fate Foretold. I like Fate Foretold, but if I care about Black Devotion, then Scourge Mark is certainly better. 
Like, I don't have a lot of blue cards. It's going to be like a 10-7 deck or something like that. But I do like my blue cards. Prussian Chimera, there are going to be times I draw that and I don't have double blue, but Omen Speaker and Trident, Triton are really the only things that need blue mana early on, and then all these other spells you're usually going to cast on 5 or 6 mana. Nykthos seems probably not even... Well, Nykthos doesn't even seem necessary here. You need 4 mana symbols for Nykthos to actually start netting you mana, because it costs 2 plus the land and Nykthos itself. So if you only have 3 mana symbols, you're just making 3 mana with 3 lands, which is not netting mana. How close to mono black could I actually get? I could play these spells. I could play like Catoblepis over Horizon Scholar. No, I think I think it just, I'd just be making my deck worse to take these blue cards out. Um so I'm not gonna play Nick though, so I don't really have a payoff for having a bunch of mana anyway. So what I'm going to do is go, uh, that seems ambitious, 10 and 7. And don't have a lot of draw power either, no read the bones, but double scourge mark seems nice. A couple scry engines, scries are always nice here. Yeah, well actually quite a few scries. So this is what we're going to play and hopefully we get to steal some games here. I'm kind of worried about how much removal we have in the deck. Not a lot, but at least the removal we have is quite good. So that's the deck. Hope you guys enjoyed the draft, and I'll see you all in match one. Hey, all, Timothy here. We're in match one of a Theros draft. Looks like we've got a okay hand. Not great, but we've got some three drops. Fell Hide Minotaur, Nimbus Naya, decent cards. Hoping to draw more action before then. Like, haha, Asphodel Wanderer, the turn two bad regenerator. Although if my opponent plays an X one, I get to attack into it pretty free, really, I think. Alright. Get in there. Get in there. And we will play Minotaur here. Mostly because Nyad has extra um, power in a couple turns. If I draw nothing, I might play Nimbus Nyad, but... If my opponent draws nothing, it's not going to matter. I'll go ahead and play that instead. Attack for three here. Uh, my opponent could have Boon Seder. 4-2 Flash Creature. They could go and block like this Asphodel. It doesn't look like they do. Uh, do I actually want to save this to bestow as well? I think I'm going to be using my next turn on Nimbus Nyad. I'll actually just cast Baleful Idol on. Blue-Green tends to have a bunch of... Uh, Big creatures, big monstrosity threat, so Baleful Eidolon being down seems nice. And given one of these, like, plus one, plus one at death touch isn't too big of a deal. Huh, that's not bad to put Nimbus Nyad on. Um, do I want to go Nimbus Nyad this turn and just keep bashing, or do I want to play Tormented Hero? I think it's more mana efficient to just do this and put it on, say, which creature would I rather them kill if they have a removal spell? I think I'd just go in on the Minotaur, right? In case they play a big flyer or something. Well, now if they kill this in response or something, I still get the Nimbus Nyad, which is nice. I'm not playing around flash creatures here. Oh, well, they've got something. Oh, they have a flash creature. Alright, they get to eat my 1-1. Ah, I forgot Horizon Chimera was a card. Whenever you draw a card, gain a life. It's good. And it's a 3-2 Flying Trample. Alright, nice. So that either means my opponent's playing something that deals with this, or they're just not interested in blocking. We're going to go with the former, the something that deals with this line. Could attack into it anyway, just to get in this extra point of damage, because they're going to be gaining a couple lives, then play Blood Tall Harpy, but... That having reach is nice. They might also just not block if they suspect a trick here. Like, Boon of Erebus would be great right now. They're going to block, though. Oh, they didn't. Cool, I just got in a bunch of free damage. And 
and Blood Tall Harpy drains us both a life. So opponent's at six, going up to seven. And Nesha Nasp is going to do work here. Another Horizon Chimera. This is on their upkeep. It's pretty sweet. So they're going to gain two life per turn. Ugh. Ironically, it would have been better to keep that idol on in hand, but you never know at the time, right? All right, so now I think we're going to start handily losing this game due to the fact that I can't attack into them, and they're going to gain two life per turn. Plus, if they have a monstrosity, I can't deal with it. If I get Erebos, Erebos will be online as a creature. So we're looking to draw, like, a Born Overlord or something here. Blue-green was one of my favorite archetypes in this format. You just get big creatures like Neshanasp, you have a lot to do with your mana, and Tusa. That can win the game at some point. Horizon Chim uh, Scholar is actually a good draw. I get the Scry 2 off of it. Help set up the next couple turns. Hopefully I don't get stymied hoped. Alright, let's see. Ooh, Sea God's Revenge is perfect. And I think it's actually worth keeping Omen Speaker on top. The Scry 2 might be worth just drawing a card, so I'll keep Sea God's Revenge on top here. And maybe I can deal 12 to my opponent next turn. See if they go for, like, some strange attack. Let me get in my point of damage here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. But they would need to... Send in pretty much everything. So let's see what let's see what their turn looks like first. Yeah, Antusa is sweet. Whenever you target a creature, or whenever you target Antusa, um, you get to turn three of your creatures into two two warriors for the turn, or three of your lands into two two attackers. Really sweet card. Sea God's Revenge could help us here, but we'll have to see what our opponent's turn looks like. Monstrosity. They have eight mana. This costs seven. I was hoping they play out creatures, but it doesn't look like they're going to. Well, I mean, I'm not blocking that. Oh, please dump all your mana into Monstrosity. This is a strange attack, though, if that's the only thing coming in. Oh, you know what my opponent has? They have a Savage Surge. They have the plus two, plus two, and untap. They're hoping I'll double block or something like that. Okay, don't care about Voyage and Seder. Yes. Make them spend enough mana that they can't replay one of these Horizon Chimeras at instant speed is great. Eight, nine, ten. And I think I can just kill them now if they have nothing. Because I have two... Four... No, I'm off by one. But they can only replay two flying threats next turn. Oh, that thing's an 8-8. <laughs> Alright, so bounce. One, two, three. Bounce all the things that can block my flyers. And I think actually maybe I put Omen Speaker on the bottom now. Because if I draw something that can target this, it'd be great. Nice. Omen's not dead here, though. I can force them to block Belfall Eidolon with Voyage and Seder. Yeah, I'm actually going to put Omen Speaker on the bottom. Uh, if I attack with everything, no, that, that's, that's, not, that's not wise. Flyers are coming in. This is 4, 8, 9, 10. Like I said, I can force them to block Belfall Eidolon. We know their hand is Aft's Double Horizon Chimera, which they might flash in. Um, I'll keep idle on back, actually. Hopefully it doesn't come down to one life. It might, actually, if, uh... No, it doesn't matter. It's just trading for a Voyage Insider. I don't want to, like, randomly die to this stupid 8-8. Eight -eight. Alright, they're flashing on upkeep. Oh, they're flashing both on upkeep. Okay. Well, now we can force them to start blocking with these Chimeras. 
Like, they're going up to three. They used all their mana. They have to block both my flyers. So both the flyers get eaten, and I get in with Blood Toll Harpy again. So if I can get one more point of damage in this coming up turn, that's fine. Um, oh, I will snap off Baleful Eidolon for this 8 8. And that's why I don't like this card too much. There's also like Sed Scorpion in this format. Ooh, Boon of Erebos. So. Yeah, I get to just kill my opponent here because I can plus two whatever flyer they don't block. Alright, close game. Opponent has stuff that combat what we have. I mean, now they know to play around Boon of Erebos, but it is what it is. Double Horizon Chimera. Do we have anything for that? <laughs> Asphodel Wanderer looks just dreadfully bad here. Crack on Triton. Opponent's playing blue green, so I kind of like the game says. Although most of what we saw was green, so maybe I bring in one game say. Bring out a scourge mark. And a null, we didn't see too many targets for. So yeah, I like making that. Cut a Scourge Mark, bring in a Gain Say. That can help us against a Chimera or something like that. Maybe some other big flyer. Uh, very similar hand, except we're on the draw this time instead of the play, so it's a little bit worse, but Insatiable Harpy is good. And opponent's going down to six. They scry to bottom. Mogus Marauder, it's not terrible. Just, I mean, I'm on like a flyer plane here, but they also have ways to deal with flyers, which is kind of annoying. Ooh, Voyaging Saver. Ramp ahead, my friend, the ramp ahead. Also, we're on mono three drops. They're going to start playing four drops. So they can play a Kaim. Oh no, they're going to play something else. Nylia's Disciple. Ooh, Nylia's Emissary. 3-3 three, three Trampler. Actually, it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, which do I play first? Maybe Blood Toll Harpy? Could play Triton Fortune Honor. So I'm going to play Insatiable Harpy next turn. Yeah, I'm going to go down to 16 on my turn, but that's fine. Although if they attack with Voyage Insider, I'm snapping that block. I know they have... I'm pretty sure they have Savage Surge. Yeah, th <laughs> this is so obviously Savage Surge, though. Is it worth getting it out of their hand, though? I think so. This Harpy doesn't have a lot of value. No, they're trading? Oh, I'm okay with that. That means no 5 drop this turn. Um, I mean, they attacked anyway, but whatever. Alright, Insatiable Harpy coming down. Then probably Fortune Hunter. Gonna take some beats, but I get to kind of mitigate a little bit of the damage here. Unless they have Nesh and Asp, then I'm in trouble. Ooh, Feral Invocation. Plus 2. So I'm taking five per turn now. So I'll take this time to play Tormented Hero plus a three drop. Probably the Triton Hunter. Hmm. Might have to do a weird block on this at some point. Opponent is down to two cards. I'm taking a lot. Baleful Eidolon would be a good draw here. I just have nothing. Erebos. How close am I to playing Erebos? So this can come down. Wait, hold on. They gain haste, right? Yeah, so I can attack for 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 this turn. I go up to 10. They could have Horizon Chimera, but all my creatures have Intimidate, so they'd have to trade it off. 
then they could hit me back down to two. If they have Savage Surge, they get to kill me. Uh, I guess I could bestow, too, and put this here just to gain a life. I think that might be worth it. Or I could draw a card here. If I do it here, I'm getting one less damage in. Oh, I could also do it on Insatiable Harpy. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Make a 4-4 lifelinker. Maybe next turn I get to draw, like, another creature into Mogus Marauder or something like that. See if the opponent has responses here. Uh, do I want to play around Savage Surge? Nah, if they're going to trade Savage Surge for one of my 2-2s, two that's fine. Yeah, they definitely have it. Although they might have wanted to keep it. I mean, they get to eat one of my guys. It's not good for me, but... The 4-point life swing is good against the 5-5. Five five. They have one card left in hand. They've got to kind of keep smashing me here. Alright, so now I can go Erebos plus Mogus Marauder. I can't attack with Erebos, of course, but that's fine. I'm one black devotion away from being able to actually attack with Erebos. Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four. Wait, what's... Oh, duh, Insatiable Harpy's double black. Oh, so Erebos had haste. Okay, cool. <laughs> Is it... I don't know why I was counting. I needed five creatures there. I forgot this was double black. So Erebos actually does come down as a creature, give it haste, and I can attack with everything this turn. Sweet, so I just had the win on board. All right. Well, we took down a deck that I think was probably favored to beat us, so pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and go to match two. Uh, Timothy here, we're back for round three on the play. I do like having Tormented here on the play, and Mogus Marauder means that it's probably going to get in some extra damage after turn one. I think this is a keep. It's kind of a gap between, like, turn three and two, turn six where I'm not going to be doing anything, but Tormented here is a good turn one play. The heroic trigger doesn't come up too often, but it happens. Man, I really miss just playing this set. This set was so great. Again, that's like a subjective opinion just because I do have nostalgia for it overall, but I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to uh, feel some sort of way about the sets I enjoy, right? I think a lot of people do, and that's fine, and there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't know, I look at these cards and just, I imagine my first interactions with magic cards too. And this set was so good at explaining the rules to a new player. Things like Heroic help explain the difference between casting a spell and resolving a spell and just subtle things like that. Um, what does this do? Gain three life, or gain two life when they target it? Alright, I get to attack my opponent for four here. Like, this is a great example. As a new player, I even tried to do this once. You know, you cast Mogus Marauder, you assume it triggers Heroic because you target the creature with Heroic, but you're not casting the spell to trigger it. You're casting this, it enters the battlefield, then you target Tormented Hero. And it just, I don't know, it it's a whole different interaction than you would assume as a new player. Ooh, ordeal. Alright, so opponent's going to gain some life and start hitting me back, I assume. That's going to make me discard two cards at some point. I mean, the life gain's relevant. The life gain is relevant. Plus, this is going to start becoming a big beater. Hero's Downfall would be an amazing draw. Anything but a land, really? Oh, that's not terrible. I'm still just going to take my beats and hit my opponent back. Now, if they play another Ordeal on it, that would be pretty backbreaking. And that happened a lot in this format. The uh, Ordeals are quite good. Where you would play an Ordeal, pump up your guy, and then play a second Ordeal, and then you would just immediately pop one the next turn. Unknown Shore, so opponent's splashing something. Wonder what that could be. It's going up to a 3-5. Gotta be careful what I play next turn. Because I'm going to have to discard two cards. Again, Hero's Downfall, please. Doesn't take much from my opponent to kind of brick wall what I'm doing. Ooh, yep, they've got the Scholar. 
I was just speaking pretty highly of this card. Alright, Asphodel Wanderer. So, bearing in mind that I'm going to be discarding, but I still want to play Horizon Chimera. I think I just keep Wander in my hand, prepare to discard these two to the Ordeal, and keep Chimera. Or Sphinx, or whatever it's called. And get in two points of damage, pass the turn back. Alright. Opponent is set up, and taking four here too, and opponent has five in hand. I'm not feeling too good about how this is going. I just, I didn't follow up my early plays with too much else. Like, a 2-3 is not what I wanted to follow up with, right? Uh, when it, if, when it enters the battlefield, you control an enchantment and gain three life. Okay. Playing that pre-combat because the ordeal is going to go away. And my opponent just has a 4-6 on board now. They could attack with the skull or two. It looks like they want to block. Uh, Wanderer wouldn't actually be bad either, since it can just eternally block this, but Scholar gives inevitability, so we're going to have to find a way to get through our opponent's defenses here, and a big flyer is exactly what we need to do that. I need to draw land in order to play this, though. Ugh, that was the worst draw. I was just thinking to myself, like... Ugh, that's so bad. Alright, um... Actually, fine if my opponent traded off the Elder for one of these. It's going to be a hard match to win from this point, I think, unless I just draw a land land. Okay, so trading off that thing, which gets brick walled here anyway. I'm under pressure, too. My opponent's black-white dirtily deck is going to overtake us here if I don't draw lands. Tormented Hero might be on chump duty this game. I mean, it got in four damage. It's just Like I said, I didn't follow up anything from, like, Turns 4 and 5, that Minotaur was just not good. Alright, don't mind that. Doesn't mean I'm not really attacking with anything here. And just pass the turn back. Might chump this turn. My opponent's going to double drain me, though. Card's so good. Oh, and they killed my thing. They had Farika's Cure. Alright, so now I'm in a lot of trouble. Now I am in a lot of trouble. I'm just dead to this in a couple turns. Nimbus Nyad. Oh, I'm just dead this turn. Alright, splashing for Nimbus Nyad. Well, that was bad. It did not work out well, did it? Viper's Kiss didn't seem particularly great. It's good against the 1-4. Opponent's creatures are bigger than mine. Gainsay not doing anything. Benthic Giant seems fine. I might want to null here. I saw, um... Maybe I want Swan Song. No, I kind of want to null because I did see Nimbus Nyad and I saw an ordeal and having a null against that could be fine. Um, and just make that same cut there. See if I can have a better start here. Uh, slow hand, it needs to draw lands, but I'm going to keep. I am playing 17 lands, so I feel fine about it, but if I draw nothing, this is going to be bad. Actually, I need to draw two more lands for it to be passable. Does not need to draw Mogus's Marauder. Alright, let's see if we get Mana Screwed out of the uh, second game of this draft here. Yep, I'm just going to keep this back on block and duty. It stops my opponent from doing the same thing with the ordeal next turn. Land? Nice. Um, I will play Minotaur here. And just pass the turn. Not giving my opponent any uh, leeway to uh, play an ordeal and just get ahead of me. Another Battle Priest I'm not too worried about. Alright, another land would be sweet. Overlord, 7 drop. So, might just play Marauder this turn and attack for 
four, I suppose. I could just attack for two. Sure. Got to get in some little bits of damage as I can. And then I am going to block Belfall Idol on. If, if these both come in, I'll just I'll block this on whatever. Seems like a fine trade to me. Scourge Mark, give it plus one so draw a card and gain two life. Well, that's fine. They might be searching for a land here. Maybe. You never know. I wouldn't mind one of my Scourge Marks here. It would let me push past their creatures. Although I think uh, I only have one left in the deck. Uh, Boon of Erebos, I don't mind either. They could have God's Will in here. Maybe a couple other tricks that I'm not really thinking of. So I think I'm going to bash and try to use Boon of Erebos to get past a creature. Whichever one, that 2-3 box. Could get blown out here. That was suspicious, too. I might have just attacked with Felhide Minotaur. Oh, opponent lets it through. Interesting. So, opponent playing around some number of tricks that I don't have, but might be aware of, maybe Voyage's End or something along those lines, and just doesn't do anything on their turn, which is good. It gives me time to draw lands, which is awesome. So now I'm not going to make that attack, and I'm just going to tap out for Insatiable Harpy. And pass the turn. Erebos? Actually, it might have been better to play Erebos there, because then if I play Insatiable Harpy the next turn, I could just bash for the 5-7. It looks like they're going to kill my Harpy regardless, though. Yeah, they have Farika's Cure. Good card. This is like a, a functional reprint of like 15 other cards that do the same thing, but they always have proper nouns. Like Soren's Thirst. Uh, there's another one <laughs> that I can't think of that literally does the same thing for the same mana cost. Something here. Ooh, all right. They've got a Scholar going. You've got a Scholar. They could have God's Willing representing single white. Ooh, Ordeal. Huh. So, I can put an Ordeal on, say, this thing. They're incentivized to go for a big block on it to try and get the Ordeal out of my hand, and then I can Boon of Erebos. Alternatively, I can play actually Erebos, and then go like Erebos' Emissary next turn and just start bashing with Erebos. I could play... I think I like holding the ordeal for now. I might play Erebos. If I can get this to start attacking next turn, that's going to be a big game. Although, if I play this, they kill one of my creatures, then it looks a little bit worse. Could also just play Emissary here. Kind of like the ordeal play. Play ordeal on Felhide Minotaur. Goes up to a 3-4. They go for... Actually, can they even kill that? Yeah, they'd have to triple block it. I would get five from Boone. So I'd be trading Boone for one creature and saving my guy. But if I can get Scholar off board, that seems pretty good. That also means I could attack with Mogus Marauder. Yeah. The only thing they can have here, I think, is God's Will. And so I'm going to go for this. I'm going to attack with Mogus Marauder, too. Because Boone on this kills anything as well. I like the Erebos play, but again, if they just kill off one of my creatures, it looks bad. Let's see if they have God's Willing. It's very likely they do with these little dorky guys. Alright, I'm going to go for Boon on this. They have God's Will, and then I trade my Boon for their God's Will, and if not, I trade my Boon for a 1-3 blocker that can gain them some life. Or, I'm sorry, a 2-3 blocker. Let's see if they can deal with the Minotaur. If not, it gets to start jamming. 
Opponent's stuck on lands. I mean, so am I, but opponent is very stuck on lands. Um, is there a, like, destroy target attacking creature? There is Divine Verdict in this format. They could have that. It looks like they do have it. Nice. Well played, opponent. Well played. So now we play... I'm going to play Erebos here. No, Erebos is Emissary, just keeps attacking. Guess that was a pretty obvious Divine Verdict. Not super obvious. Anytime they leave mana up, it looks like they could just be using Scholar's ability, which is nice. But I can pitch creatures to basically trade off their creatures here. Oh, never mind. No, I can't. Ooh, and return phalanx. All right, you got blockers. Just drawing lanes would be sweet. Get to this abhorrent overlord. Now I'm going to play Erebos. And if nothing else changes, I can start drawing cards with Erebos. I'm at a decently high life total. My opponent's not pressuring me the same way they did last game. And one more Devotion means I get to attack with Erebos. Ooh, Wingsteed Rider's nice. That is what pressure looks like. Oh, they put a Ordeal on that. Sea God's Revenge. So I'm just going to draw a card here. Swamp. I'm going to play that and probably just draw two more cards. Take a beating from this. If I can play or Abhorrent Overlord next turn i think i'm in very good shape i, I imagine this is just going to get ordealed up here yep and it gets a counter right away smash it's going to be a close game i think this is going to lose me a lot of life I think I do want to draw the full amount of cards here. Sea God's Revenge is actually going to be good. I might actually use Sea God's Revenge first. No, that seems wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six. My devotion is going to be six. I'll get six one one flyers. Very least, I'll be able to chump forever. All right, and Erebos can start smashing now. Then next turn, I'll get Sea God's Revenge. Try to wrap it up with that. Maybe I should be attacking with Baleful Idol on, too. They're not really attacking me anymore. Yep. Activate and pass. I don't foresee them killing me here by any means. I mean, they could attack with Wingsteed Rider just to make me discard two cards. Especially if they think they're going to lose the game, they should do that because they get to see two more cards from my hand. But I don't foresee them getting out of this situation. Even if they kill this, I go bounce, bounce, bounce. Attack with everything. Hopeful I don't. Alright, you have a life linker, so that's going to be a 6-6 six, six flyer. Still not too worried about it. It's going to gain them a big chunk of life. They're going to make me discard two cards. Discard Tormented Hero and an Island. Oh, oh now they're... Oh, if they have... Um, whatchamacallit? God's Will, and this is going to be bad, but not so bad that I can't deal with it. Uh, let's say, sure. I'm not going to auto-yield there. Go ahead and sack a Harpy. Sure. Play a land. Let's see if we can revenge them. One... Two, no, don't care. They're going to have to cast more spells. They're not going to be able to use that. One, two, three. One, two, three. If they have God's will and they can save that. Nope, they did not. All right. Let's do that again. Game three. Game three. Hmm. 
hopeful at all and does make me definitely want to keep in the uh, Anul. The Benthic Giant doesn't seem bad here either. Do I want Fate Foretold for any reason? Like I said, Scourge Mark's just going to be better than Fate Foretold. Scourge Mark actually seems decent too, just to get the over the hump of those uh, Satessan battle, whatever they're called. So, Asphodel Wanderer seems decidedly terrible. Alright, we'll run it back. This time on the draw. It was a pretty good game. Omen Speaker is always nice. I think this is a keep. It is very mana heavy, but hopefully Omen Speaker gets us out of that rut, and we are on the draw anyway. Scourge Mark, fine follow up if nothing else happens. Two drop. Oh, return Phalanx. All right, they don't have a lot of blue mana, so that's not going to be attacking me for a while. But it does block pretty well. Play Blood Till Harpy next turn anyway. Uh, do I want this Chimera? I certainly don't want the Swamp. I do have. I don't have double blue, so Chimera's kind of iffy, right? But it's very good against my opponent. What are the chances I draw in the next two turns after that? Another Island with Scourge Mark. No stuff to do. I don't think I'm supposed to ship this to the bottom, just because I can't guarantee I'm going to be able to cast it. Although it is very good against the removal my opponent shown me. No three drop, no wingsteed rider or um, what's the other card called? <laughs> uh, at Scholar of Athros. All right, well, we'll ding us each a life and just pass the turn here and hopefully start attacking with this Blood Toll Harpy. Ooh, Heliod's Emissary. Whenever it attacks, it taps a creature I control. It's pretty good. Well, we did draw an island, so Chimera looking like it would have been pretty good there. I think I'm just going to run out uh, Scourge Mark plus Idol on this turn. Scourge Mark gives plus one plus oh, so we'll dump it on the flyer. I'm not blocking Heliod's Emissary next turn. Erebos seems sweet here. Uh, let's attack for three in the air. Play Eidolon. I can see a case for also just playing Nimbus Nye at this turn and try to like clock my opponent for more damage over the course of the next couple turns. Probably going to suit something up with Nimbus Naya next turn and start attacking. Like, this isn't even that good here because my opponent taps it down when they attack and then they... I, I can't really block with Omen Speaker profitably. Oh, Hope Fight on. That's gross. Alright, so the life swings are in my opponent's favor right now. Let me tap down my Baleful Idol on. And a four-point life swing. Alright, Hero's Downfall, one time please. Can I have it? Oh, just a swamp. Um, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna play Erebos here. Am I blocking with anything? No, so I might as well attack with everything. I'm going to need to deal with that. Oh. <sighs> that was stupid. Uh, I don't know why I thought that thing couldn't do anything. Oh, that was so bad. I don't know why I did that. That was so dumb. <laughs> I just ran my guy into his 3-3. Three, three. I, I don't know why I blanked on that. Doesn't matter if I can't deal with this stupid emissary over the course of the next couple turns. It's just it's gaining them too life for me to be able to race. I can't leave back multiple blockers because I can always tap one down when it attacks. 
So this is going to be a hard match for me to keep up with if I don't do something. Alright, and Erebos' Emissary. Well, I have an Erebos' Emissary of my own. I could draw a card and play Emissary here. I could also bestow something. Let's just cast this. I think I want to leave my guys back now. They have to use a removal spell pre-combat in order to attack, I guess. No, they could just jam and tap Erebos. But they have to have a removal spell for that to work. They don't have double black right now, so they can't freak as cure me. <coughs> They can't Divine Verdict until after I go to blocks. This thing can deal a lot of damage too. Alright, we're in an interesting spot here. But a 5-7 Indestructible is good. Could have an Omen Speaker on board. Omen Speaker would be a good little chump blocker for Erebos' Emissary, but instead, for some reason, I attacked it into a 3 3 wall. Is this even a wall? No, it's a zombie soldier. Creepy art. Opponent really hard in the tank here, so I don't think they have a straight up removal spell, otherwise, they would have said, boom, kill like Blood Toll Harpy or Erebos' Emissary, and then Erebos goes offline. Um. If nothing changes this turn, I'm going to draw a card. Let's see if they tap Erebos and then get me to block with another creature. And then like Divine Verdict or something. Let me see if that's what happens here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is block with Baleful Eidolon. And I imagine their plan here is to Divine Verdict and hope that I just... Uh, don't have another way to get Erebos online. Oh no, they make that trade? Wow. Huh. Did not see that happening. Hmm. Ooh, that's good. So I have seven mana. I can play both of my creatures and... Hold up Boon, keep Erebos back as a potential blocker here. Play Fellhide Minotaur. Uh, Divine Verdict doesn't deal with Erebos, so I'm going to attack with just Erebos. Because if I attack with like Blood Toll plus er Erebos, then they can Divine Verdict this and Erebos stops being a creature. They're chumping too? They have so much life though. Oh, they can't gain life. Oh. That's why they stayed at 16, right. Uh, do I keep Nimbus Nyad in hand? No. Well, no, you know what? I want... Well, I could also just draw two cards here, go down to five. I don't want to put myself too low. But Nimbus Nyad also seems like it's going to be pretty strong. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep Nimbus Nyad in hand here. Erebos doing work. I forgot they couldn't gain life. They'd be at 21 right now. That's such a weird series of uh, attacks and blocks from the opponent. God's willing. Oh, they're going to kill me now? They have... Oh, they're going to kill me. They just have to discard three creatures, I suppose. So, oh. No, let it happen. Give Pro Black. Oh, if I played Nimbus Naya, this wouldn't happen. And then they discard three creatures. They give it plus six, and they kill me. That's pretty insane. So if I had played Nimbus Naya, I'd, I'd be able to block it. I didn't think about that. 
Discard one, two, and I guess I can draw a card, but I don't have any two mana spells that deal with this, so. Nope. All right, good game from the opponent. Yeah, so it seemed like playing Nimbus Nag was there. If I was thinking about God's Willing, then it would have been right to play this. That's kind of a bummer. Just died out of nowhere, but that's what happens. I'll see you all in match three. All right, welcome back from match three. We're one in one, trying to pull out the 2-0 here. Looks like we're on the draw, which makes my tormented hero a little worse. Wow, this would be a great draw on the, or a, a great hand on the play. Tormented hero into ordeal plus boon to back it up. Let's see if our opponent has anything to interact with us though, because if not, I might be able to go just like ordeal and get them. If not, get to start swinging in with boon. Seems good. We got pretty next leveled in that last round. Ooh, is there anything that can deal with this in white green? Maybe not. I'm gonna go for the ordeal. This gets me in four points of damage this turn. Yeah, we got next leveled pretty hard. I could have played around uh, God's Willin', but I didn't see it in the first two matches, so, you know. All right, nice little start against green white. And the follow up from the opponents. Hmm. Nothing. All right, Boon of Erebos means I'm fairly safe attacking in here. They can't Divine Verdict me on 3 mana. Oh, they do have Boon Seder. Alright, so flash it in, block, and I will Boon of Erebos in response. Nice little flash creature. And I get an extra point of damage with Tormented Hero. I guess I don't actually hit them, though. So if they can't deal with this now, they're going to have to discard two cards, which is nice. And I'll have a 5-4 on board. Probably just play Emissary next turn. Ooh, 100-handed one. Six mana. It can block 100 creatures. Scourge Mark's nice. Do I go Scourge Mark here or Erebos' Emissary? My opponent's playing nothing but rare so far. Kind of like the idea of going Scourge Mark here. Just because Emissary can't attack through that anyway. And it does get me in that extra point. Nimbus Nyad. Does it gain reach? It does gain reach. All right, so attacking with a 6-4, I don't think my opponent's going to want to trade or just chump with 100-handed one. And pass the turn. Discard in Warrior's Lesson and a land. Oh, just play a big creature and pass. I can kill him with Nimbus Nyad. Get the turn 5 win. Perfect. Well, that'll do it. I don't think there's anything in white that's going to stop him from dying this turn. Oh, this has Vigilance. Neat. This was the first rare I ever opened in the Theros draft, and I did not take it. Cool. GG opponent. That was a pretty uh <laughs> pretty one-sided match. Those ordeals are crazy good. Viper's Kiss. We only saw three cards from our opponent. Nothing to really bring in any of this, to be honest. So run it back. Ooh, 100 handed one can block all of my tokens when it's monstrosity. I haven't drawn Heroes Downfall a single time. I guess I've drawn Sea God's Revenge, which might be an out to 100-handed one. 
Also gotta watch out for Boon Seder. It's 4-2 flash, but you can also bestow it at instant speed. This is not a keep. This does nothing. If I don't draw an early game creature, Scourge Mark doesn't even do anything. This is more reasonable. An opponent's going down to 5. Keep. No blue. Um, I guess... Nah, I don't want that. Uh, did my opponent... Yeah, my opponent scribed to the bottom. Uh, Fortune Hunter. Alright, it's gonna be a less of a lopsided match. We might actually have to play Magic this time and not blow our opponent out of the air. When it attacks, each attack in human gains fly until end of turn. Oh, you're late. You are late. Gonna save that for later. Well, Belfall Eidolon might be better to just bestow later on. Yeah, I'll play Tormented Hero. Gets in more damage if my opponent plays nothing. It attacks through more creatures. I'm just Mana efficiency aside, seems like the better thing to do here. Alright, all of your attacking humans get flying. And a pass. Draw a six drop blue card. Don't worry, we'll get there. Oh, see, if my opponent has nothing now, I get to just uh, deal an extra point of damage. And play Blood Toll Harpy. And pass. Opponent already low on cards and not hitting green sources. And yeah, not blocking. Ooh, Boon of Erebus off the top. Another Baleful Idol on. Well, now I don't mind running out at least one Baleful Idol on. I don't know that I want to run both out. I think I'll play one and keep the other as like a Bestow creature or something. Maybe not. Maybe I just run them both out, because they can attack into anything my opponent plays. Yeah, I'll run them both out. Although, if I draw a blue source... Nah, I'll run out one. Because if I draw a blue source, I would love to play um, Fortune Hunter and then have a target for Fortune Hunter. See, now I get to attack into that. 2-2 two -two Vigilance. Sweet little card. Scourge Mark's nice. Do I actually play it here, though? If I play it here, my opponent's for sure trading, but my card replaced itself. I do get in that one life off the heroic, though. I think it's worth it. And who knows, I might draw a boon. Nope, just a, just a lonely old island. Yeah, I'll attack with both, and if my opponent wants to do any blocks, then sure. Imagine they block Tormented Hero. It's fine. This is unfortunate my opponent's stuck on three lands. But what can you do? So I'll probably play Fortune Hunter. If I draw a land, I'm going to slay him Horizon Scholar. It's not going to matter if my opponent doesn't draw anything. <clears throat> and this will make me a lot happier that I left this Baleful Eidolon in my hand. Doesn't take too much for my opponent to just kind of come back into this game, though. I mean, this Death Toucher is going to be annoying, but it doesn't pressure them that much. Oh, they hit green. Staunch Hearted Warrior. It's a card that can deal a lot of damage very quickly. Gets two plus one plus one counters whenever you target it. Huh. So now I think it's better to play... I mean, if they want to trade this for anything, they can go for it. I'm going to offer them the trade still, just the less cards they have, the less relevant the pump spells they have in their hand are. Cool. It's actually fine by me. And a Horizon Chimera. Or, I'm sorry, Horizon Scholar. Scry 2. Now my opponent's in trouble. Ooh, and these are just good draws. Um, what am I playing next turn? I have 6 mana. I would rather get the um, Ordeal going first. So we're going to go ahead and keep that on top, and just pass. What you got for a 4-4 flyer? Something. What was that? Vanquish? Oh, Shredding Wind. 7 damage to a flyer. Alright. Uh, I'm going to play Prescient Chimera here. 
Next turn I can go Harpy plus Ordeal. We've traded pretty much one for one this whole game, and still pretty far ahead of the opponents. Ooh, this card is very good. Flying first strike, 4-4. Four, four. But I get to ordeal this up and attack past it. It's totally going to do that. Doesn't have lifelink, though. As first strike, so my death touch creatures don't matter that much. Uh, opponent has another really good rare in their deck. It's unfortunate. Like, they seem to have a pretty good deck here. Minus Cavalry Pegasus. And I do have Lethal on them next turn, so let's see what they can follow up with. Because if they deal with Chimera, I'm in trouble. But hey, I'm due to draw a hero's downfall at some point in this game, right? Fade into Antiquity, the Death Toucher, not the Ordeal. So that means they have some sort of Pump Spell in hand. Hmm. What could it be? It could be Savage Surge. If so, that would make their guy a 6-6 six, six First Striker. Uh, it can't be Boon Seder here. Be God's Willing. I think I'm going to actually... Bestow this here, and then attack, and that'll make my guys 7 toughness, so that if they do have Savage Surge or Feral Invocation, I don't die to it, and they would have to chump. So a plus 2 plus 2 isn't enough. I might be blanking on a couple other spells they could have here. They're not blocking, so they just let me kill them. Okay, uh, that was unfortunate for the opponent because they looked like they had a good deck. They had Celestial Archon, Boon Seder, and Hundred Hand one, but they got stuck on mana, so unfortunate. Also, super unfortunate we got uh, <laughs> killed by that protection from Black Erebos's emissary in game two. But you know, I wasn't thinking about it. I could have, I could have played around it too. But at any rate, I hope you guys at least enjoyed the matches, and um, we might do a couple more of these. Like I said. I have a very uh, fond spot for Theros Draft in general. I just love it, so I hope to share that with you guys, and maybe I can get some friends to come over and do some drafts with me. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this draft. I got enough points for another draft anyway, so we'll see you guys in the next Theros Draft or Rivals Vixon Draft, and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.